Hey everybody, Asher here. Let's talk Distant Worlds 2. This video is being made on release day and one of the most common comments I see is, wow, this game looks amazing, but I have heard very little about it, don't know much about it, so I'm going to come in here and give you five ideas, five ways that you can make your first runs in the game stronger, better, faster. It's all very good, and just so the YouTube algorithm can burn straight in hell, we are not going to be putting in some added filler. Let's go right down to it. Number one, beeline for warp drives. That's right, there is a whole research tree with a lot of different options here, but the number one thing you can do to help save yourself in the very early game is just go ahead and start researching your hyperspace travel so that you can go faster. Your ships will attempt to trudge maybe to a nearby moon or a nearby other planet or gas giant, but really you're going to run into the old sci-fi trope situation of your first warp drive comes so fast in this game because you get a research boost from an early game event that your sad little engine that could will be bypassed by your first ships that get their own upgrades. So don't worry about other stuff, you'll have plenty of time to research it, but the sooner you can start exploring your system will be the faster that you get out of your system. And exploring is a very important part in Distant Worlds. Number two, do not overbuild. Now if you've watched any of my series, you may know that I've gotten in just a little bit of financial trouble. But the way to avoid that is to not necessarily just say yes to everything that is around in the game. Lots of stuff costs money, whether it's maintenance or otherwise. That means you don't need to build every building that's suggested to you. You don't need to take every ship that's available to you immediately. You don't need to build a massive defense armada early. What you can do is try to build things that will slowly, progressively support your private economy. Now, it, you may not know this, but there are two, are two different economies in Distant Worlds 2. There is the public government sort of economy, and then there's the private sort of here's our mining ships, haulers, cargo bays, traders, things like that. That's its own separate thing, and that engine in turn helps build and keep your government economy running. It's a fascinating system. It really deserves its own video, but the short story here is don't overbuild so that you're strangling your private economy before it can get off the ground. Number three, fear and or respect the pirates. Yes, that may sound a little bit counterintuitive, given that typically pirates will come after you as some of the first things you meet out in outer space. And they will either just say, you know what, we really don't like you, or please pay us money and we will continue to give you protection. They're bullies, and you may even get some pushback from your own citizens saying, why are you working with these people? They're clearly evil. But pirates can be useful. First off, the protection can actually help against potential other threats that are lurking in space, but also just the fact of paying a little bit of money per month to not get blown out of the sky is enough to get you off the ground to either A, try to build a relationship with the pirate faction, maybe sometimes they just need a hug, and then you can maybe work with them, work towards them, and have a good friend at the end of the day, or B, more likely, just build up your forces enough and build up your initial game start enough to where you can stop paying that protection fee and then hunt the pirates yourself. Number four, let mining stations do survey work for you. Now, as I've mentioned before, exploration is incredibly important in Distant Worlds too, and you may have found yourself having exploration ships surveying planets and then eventually they get stuck. You can tell in the UI that there's still things to explore, but your survey ships won't actually keep digging. That's because you start the game with lower level sensors and there's stuff that you can't actually find. But there is a way to literally dig out what information, what hidden stuff is left in the planet, and that is by slapping a mining station in orbit around the planet. And slowly but surely, you will reveal the re remaining hidden stuff. The same goes for if you build a colony on a planet. Eventually, your people will crawl through all the nooks and crannies of the planet and find everything. You want to be using your exploration ships to explore, and you want to explore outward as much as you can. That means start with your home planet, sure. Get to your system as soon as you can. Get to other stars as soon as you can. Try not to get too bogged down with surveying every single possible asteroid. And five, don't be afraid to automate. You may have seen other content creators who do play this game by doing most things manually, but just know that there are a lot of options for you to either play manual or play automatic or have the game prompt you when you can do something. Distant Worlds 2 is an overwhelming game, and there's a lot to learn. And my suggestion for you to find your own fun is to maybe automate more stuff and then figure out slowly but surely, this is what I want to try to play this time, this is what I want to make decisions for on my own. And then eventually you can figure out some systems 
and then eventually go from, okay, maybe I will do exploration myself. Maybe I'll use the ship builder myself. Maybe I'll do diplomacy myself. There's just a lot of different ways to play this. And I think one of the best parts of Distant Worlds 2 is that the tools are available for you there to even have the game just fully play itself while you watch, or you can get down, do the nitty gritty, and do every single task yourself. And trust me, there's a lot of tasks that you can do yourself. But the choice is yours. The menu's right there, very easy to find in the UI. Don't miss it, but more importantly, don't be afraid of it. If you're not sure, just let the game tell you what to do. Generally, especially in the early game, it does a good job of it. So that's it. Like I said, five ways that you can go for a stronger start in Distant Worlds 2. Beeline for warp drives early. Don't overbuild. Fear or respect the pirates, assuming they find you, and they will find you. Let mining stations do survey work while your exploration ships explore the stars. And don't be afraid to automate, so that way you can find your own fun in the game. So that's it, this is Asher with Distant Worlds 2, and this is the part where I tell you that if you have any of your own ideas that would be helpful, I'd love to hear it in the comments because honestly, videos on this channel tend to have a really good population of comments that are helpful for other people. I've seen it in Star Sector, I've seen it in other games, so if you have any ideas, by all means drop them down here. Thanks for watching, game's out, go play.